I like your background, Chris. Well, it's Halloween time, so. It's perfect. Yeah, and I need to start the movie again. Yeah. What um what's your favorite Halloween movie? Oh, shoot. I know it's a hard one. <laughs> Um, I would have to see Nightmare before Christmas. Nightmare before Christmas, yeah. I've only yeah. seen it once. I saw I it once in college, and I, I need to rewatch it. Other than that, I've been liking the Scream movies. But I do need to see Scream 5 and 6, because yeah. I'm way behind on those. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are fun too. Mm -hmm. Hey, Linda. Good morning. Diamond. Look, so very glad that you are here. If you are new to us or new watching us, we want you to know that we believe that every single person is an equal and beloved child of the divine who deserves kindness and friendship and dignity, respect, and love. We express our love for one another, not only through sharing, but also through giving, through helping others and helping one another. We are individuals who are open and affirming of absolutely everyone. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We strive to be an anti-racist congregation and we get it right more than we get it wrong. So welcome home. We are glad you're here. Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet this morning? We have two songs we're gonna open up with. The first one is There's a Light. from a 
Amen. That was great. Thank you, band. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us worship the Lord our God, so that we might discern the will of our Creator. Come, let us worship the Lord our God, so that we might imagine together what God can do through us. Come, let us worship the Lord our God, so that we might become the people God is calling us to be. Using our heads, hearts, and hands to fulfill the mission and ministry of our church. Please join me in prayer. God of hope, draw us near to you in our time together. Remind us of the many ways we are connected to each other and to you. Encourage us to be resilient, to rely on you to see us through even when it feels impossible. Renew our hearts, O oh God, and revive our spirits. Amen. At this time in our worship, it is our tradition to light a candle to symbolize our, pr our individual prayers. For those of you at home, you can light a candle in your home, but uh, for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, I invite you to come forward and light a table, light a candle at our candle table as the next song plays. Always remember, God is with us in all times. Please join me in lighting a candle. Let's see if I can do this.
This is our time when we can share with one another where we have seen God at work in our lives this week. Meg, I'm going to start with you because I often forget the folks online and I'm so sorry. Um, well, is there fine. anybody online? Um, I am not seeing any hands, but I'm just going to give folks a moment to unmute if they have anything they'd like to share. Absolutely. All right. I think, I think we're good here. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anyone here? I see Bill making his way forward. Well, Bill makes his way forward. Um, in about three hours, yeah. Nick is landing in Costa Rica for his Spanish teacher trial. So keep him in your prayers. That's And that is directly because of the Mexico missions that he experienced here, that he's Amen. motivated to Amen. go. So that's truly a sign of it. Amen. It's one of the ways that our hands, our hearts, and our heads have transformed lives, right? Is through that mission. Amen. Uh, we're often told that uh, in prayer, we get what we need, not what we want. Uh, I really wanted to see the Operation Santa Claus come back. And we got our hopes dashed on three different occasions about funding. And so last, uh, I guess two weeks ago on Thursday, I told Andy to take it off the list because uh, somebody else wanted the fellowship hall. Uh, you know, they should have it. And the next day, enough funding showed up so that we'll have uh, Operation Santa Claus light, excuse me, light this year. There'll only be one session. We want to honor Jerry Yarrow, who passed away from uh, kidney failure, probably caused by Agent Orange, uh, for all the work and dedication that he put into putting this together in the first place. So this year's... Uh, session will be dedicated to Jerry, but uh, we will have a session and we'll build from there. So thank you. Amen. And thank you for your years of dedication to that program. For those who may not know um, what Operation Santa Claus is, it's um, a program that's put on by, and I'm going to mess it up, Gold Star Families and another group, several military groups. Um, and it's a way to make sure that children of, um, deployed service members who are not the highest paid yet, they're, they've got lower ranking, um, military ranking. Um, and so they don't get a lot of money and they're deployed. And so this makes sure that their children can have a wonderful Christmas, even while mom or dad. Um, is deployed. And we host it here, and Santa Claus comes, and I know, and there's build a bit, there's all kinds of fun stuff. The first year we had a snow, because I was missing snow, you know, because it doesn't snow here, except when you drive to places people can't drive. Um, yeah, folk don't know how to drive in the snow. Anyway, um, but we had a, we had a snow bank um, over by the youth building and the kids were sledding down. I wanted to go, but Bill wouldn't let me. So you are not, you are not. Uh, but thank you, Bill, for that work. And it takes a lot of work to set it up. So I know, and most of the time those military folks come in, they get it set up. Um, but if Bill asks you for help, please help. Um, it's a wonderful ministry that we are able to do uh, for those families. So please help if you can. Anybody else? Michelle, come on down. My niece, Lisa. I, I tell my niece, Lisa, and why? I'm an auntie now. Oh. My niece, Lisa, said, my nephew and his wife got a tiny little baby girl. Oh, wow. Right. And we should have watch it him. Okay. Pray for them. Okay. We will pray for them. So <laughs> Michelle is another, is an aunt again. Um, and so there's Lisa had a baby. Lisa had the baby. 
Okay. Is the baby's name Lisa? No. No, Lisa. Just, okay, I misunderstood. Okay, not a problem. Not the first time. But Michelle's a not. So there we go. Yes. Our world traveler. I think I know why you're coming this way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we've been, I've been gone for a little bit, so I have a, a short list, please bear with me. Um, but uh, yes, I was gone on a cruise, my mom turns 70, my sister turns 50, so they plan this big thing. Yeah, uh, I'm, I've learned I don't like cruises. <laughs> it, they're, they're too many people and too much drinking. But every and they're like little petri dishes. Yes. So the the sign of life is we all came out unscathed. So yay, yay. And there's nope. this, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and there's this thing that people do where they um, hide little charms on the boat or, or the ship. Um, and so someone hid little Jesuses. Oh, and so we were finding Jesus on the cruise. It was it's like a sign that God has a, God has a, a sense of humor. It was. Hilarious. We're like, I found Jesus. Hilarious. I love this. It was great. Uh, it was oh, so funny. Oh, we should funny. do that here. <laughs> I found Jesus. And you could just tell people, I found Jesus at First Christian Church. Yeah, it okay, was so ahead, fun. No, no, it was so, it was so <laughs> funny. It was so funny. Um, So big shout out to Tristan, who I think is on his way with the twins and Bowen for holding down the fort because they had like 10 dogs they were watching and laundry great. and, you know, so. They did great. Yeah. And, um. They made it here last Sunday, they which did. was another miracle because I wasn't there to get them all there. And then uh, Friday, they had a band concert. Bowen on the baritone saxophone, Landon on the euphonium. You can check what that is later. <laughs> and Iden on the trumpet, and they just killed it. Like, they were amazing. And they didn't tell anybody that this was happening. And, we I, and I forgot because I wasn't here but there's another one coming in december okay. so i'll let you all know all right. and on that note Iden is on the, in another play so anyone who wants to go see another it'll be shorter so it won't be <laughs> quite as long of a visit as before um the theater is going to be in pittsburgh because they had a lot of trouble finding an open theater so it's a little bit further away but um that's yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can see me if you want anything with that. And um, yeah, it's pastor appreciation too. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, you. So uh, you kind of stole my thunder, but uh, we'll send you on a side quest and a scavenger hunt to get a church next time. You find Jesus. <laughs> we'll find Jesus. Right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, no worries. Uh, on behalf of the FCC Admin and Ministry Council, as well as the entire congregation, we would like to say thank you. And for Clergy Appreciation Month, as well as Leslie's anniversary when she joined the church, which was October 1st. Yeah. October 1st. We'd yeah. like to present you with this token of our appreciation. Thank you. That's actually, there we go, the right side. And I can truly say confidently that you are the sign of life that keeps this church going. And we appreciate your leadership and guiding this church. And I'm not sure we'd be where we are today without you. So just thank you for leading us into the future. Thank you. All right. Thanks, church. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, so officially five years ago, I started as the pastor. So yeah, five years ago, October 1st. So it's hard to believe. All right, anybody else? All right, kids, if you want to go with Miss Diana and uh, Minister Audrey, we'll see you after church. Okay. We have shared lots of signs of life and lots of joy. And it's time to bring all of that and our concerns before God and one another. As you prepare for, as we together prepare for our time of prayer, if you are online, 
simply type in your prayer request and it will be included in the intersections. And Meg will, this week, because Andy's on vacation, Meg will send uh, the prayer request to me and to Sue. Um, if it is confidential, please just send it as a direct message to Meg if you're online. Um, and Meg will make sure that Jacob and I get those as as with the elders, um, the other elders. If you are here in the sanctuary, we have these handy cards, which will soon be changing, but we have these handy cards. Um, please just fill it in with what you need. Um, if it is confidential, mark it as such. Um, if it is just for me, uh, mark it as confidential pastor only, and, um, and we will collect those up, okay? Will you join me in prayer? Oh, Holy One, we come before you with so many things that are happening in our world and in our own lives. We bring them all to you, knowing and trusting and believing that you hear us and you speak to us. You speak to us not only in our heads, our hearts, and our hands. You speak to us through our friends and our relationships. We ask, oh God, that you guide us and lead us as we move through these next several weeks. As a country, oh God, we are divided and we pray for peace in this nation. We pray for peace in Washington. We pray for peace in Sacramento. We pray for peace everywhere. Oh God, we ask that you guide us and lead us as we not just move through this election cycle, but that we move through, as we move through looking forward, as we hold one another up, as we, as we work together to be not just the people you are calling us to be, but the congregation you are calling us to be. We ask, oh God, that you hold us close. Let us feel your presence in this room. Let us feel your presence even when we are apart from one another. And if we need to do a scavenger hunt to find you, that we find you everywhere we look. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for the ways in which you are present with us, all of the different ways that you guide us and lead us, and, and all of the different ways that you answer our prayers. So hear us now as we lift up to you the concerns and maybe even some extra joys that are in our hearts, on our hearts and in our minds. Hear us as we pray. Donna. Andy. Oh God, we thank you for your gift of presence with us. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit resting within us. And we pray these things and so much more in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Use the words most familiar to you, our Creator, who is in heaven. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I was asked to share uh, for our stewardship moment um, why it's important for me uh, to give um, both financially and of my time to First Christian Church in Concord. Uh, three words that I, I want us or I invite us to remember um, as we give this morning and as we think about our commitments and our pledges for the following year. Faith, hope, and love. And a little bit how I view these words and how they relate to, to why I think it's important for us to sustain the mission of First Christian Church. Faith. You'll have to excuse me because I am a, a graduate of a seminary. Uh, I do think of faith as uh, this kind of uh, dense word called theology. That's usually how I think of the idea of faith is our ideas of God, our thoughts of God, the way we talk about God, the way we envision God. And I would say, I would advocate that our theology at First Christian Church matters, right? The, the, the idea that everyone is welcome, no matter where they are uh, in life's journey and where they sit on that spectrum of faith and doubt, they are important and that God loves them. I'm going to just say, because this is usually something I normally say, there are too many churches in this world, in this community, that advocate the opposite of that. But we don't, right? We advocate a message of hope, inclusion, love, recipro uh, reciprocity, uh, and equity, right? And that matters, faith. Number two, hope. When I think of the word hope, I think of the word future, looking forward. I believe that our future at First Christian Church matters. Everything from this building to our groups that we're a part of to the outreach that we do, to the children that are being educated uh, under this building, to every detail, seen and unseen. I believe that across that spectrum of visibility, things that are high visibility and low visibility, all of these actions that we take at First Christian Church have tremendously high impact. None of that is possible without us as believers giving our resources of time and of money, those two things together, right? hope. The number three, love. Our community matters. From our signs of life that we share, to the smiles that we give when we see one another, to the prayers that we offer, whether it be through the text chain or through you know the messages on Zoom or through the bulletin, all of those things matter. One other thing that I, I see love in our community is our times of fellowship. And as we've kind of uh, left that sort of shelter in place mindset. And we've learned how to enter into this new hybrid reality of doing church. The times that we are gathered together in person, especially, but also both in person and online, all of those moments foster love and they matter. And friends, none of that is possible without our commitment of time and our commitment of money. Those two things together make that manifestation of love possible. Faith, hope, and love. In the Bible, uh, you know, there, there was this idea of trying to classify, not classify, but describe, if you will, kind of the essence. What is God's essence, right? And the author in the scripture writes that these three things are eternal when we think about God. Faith, hope, and love. He said the greatest of those three things were love. I would advocate that our community of love matters most above everything else. We all come from different walks of life. We all come from different paths, different backgrounds, and yet we've created this one body with so many diverse pieces, and it's a beautiful thing, but none of that is possible without our commitment of time and our commitment of money. Finally, I, I just want to add, when we think about faith, hope, and love, and we think about those attributes as attributes of God, I just want to declare, and I hope that you see this as well, I see God, I feel God, and I know God in this place. And as we commit with our pledges of, of time and money, uh, we can expand that reach. We can expand that visibility. We can expand that impact to those that desperately need this message of faith, hope, and love. Amen.
Thank you. Okay, I knew Jacob was going to be speaking before me, and I just have to say I never went to seminary. I can spell it, if that helps. <laughs> he said it so well. I just have to add amen and invite you all to bring your offering forward during the next song. Um, if you need help, please raise your hand, and a deacon will bring the basket to you. Thank you. Please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Jesus, thank you for the gift of your love and for these wonderful gifts that everyone has shared with our church today. Help us to connect more fully to you and to discern your hopes for our lives. May we choose your way forward with all that we are. Amen.
Normally, Audrey would be reading today, but Audrey is with the kids today. Um, so you get me. <laughs> and I know how to say the bad words. No. <laughs> well, not really bad words, but the hard words that are in the scripture. Okay, I'm just going to read because... This is going away. I don't want it to go. And it's being recorded. So now it's in there for, okay. Here's <laughs> today's scripture reading comes to us uh, from Nehemiah chapter 10, verse one, and then skipping down to 28 through 39. Upon the seals are the names of governor Nehemiah and all the other leaders. The rest of the people, the priests and the Levites and the gatekeepers, the singers, the temple servants, and all who have separated themselves from the neighboring peoples to follow the instruction from God, together with their wives and their sons and their daughters and all who have knowledge and understanding. They join with their officials and their relatives and make a solemn pledge to live by God's instruction, which was given by Moses, God's servant, and to observe faithfully all the commandments and judgments and statutes of our Lord God. We won't give our daughters in marriage to the neighboring peoples, nor take their daughters in marriage for our sons. If the neighboring peoples bring merchandise or any grain to sell on the Sabbath, we won't buy it. We won't buy it from them on the Sabbath or any other holy day. And every seventh year, we won't plant the crops and we will return everything that is held in debt. We pledge ourselves to keep the commandment and to pay one-third of a shekel each year for the service of, our, of God's house, for the stacks of bread and the regular grain offering and the regular entirely burned offering, for the Sabbaths and the new moons and the appointed festivals, for the holy offerings and the purification offerings to make reconciliation for Israel. And, and for all the work of our God's house. We have also cast lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people so that we bring the wood offering into our God's house by families as, a, as at the appointed times every year to burn on the altar of the Lord of our God it is, as it is written in the instruction. We will also bring yearly produce of our soil and the, and the early fruit from all of the trees every year to the Lord's house. We will also bring the oldest offspring of our children and of our cattle, as it is written in the instruction, and the oldest males of our herds and our flocks to our God's house, to the priests who serve in our God's house. We will also bring the first of our dough, our contributions, and every fruit, and the fruit of every tree, the wine and the oil to the priest at the storerooms of our God's house. We will also bring one tenth of the produce of our soil to the Levites, for it is the Levites who collect the tenth part gifts in all the towns where we work. A priest from the family of Aaron must be with the Levites when they collect the tenth part gifts. And the Levites must bring up one tenth of the tenth part gifts to our God's house, to the storerooms of the treasury. 
the Israelites and the Levites must bring a contribution of grain and wine and oil to the storerooms where the sanctuary equipment is kept and where the priests are on duty, the gatekeepers and the singers reside. We won't neglect our God's house. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's holy word. Amen. So the Israelites, we've been going through Nehemiah, you know by now that the Israelites have finished building the walls and the gates that surround the city of Jerusalem, and they celebrate that accomplishment. Remember last week, they were reminded, Ezra and Nehemiah reminded them, don't be sad because you don't keep all the, you didn't keep all the rules. You get a second chance at that. Celebrate, celebrate what you've done. Celebrate the ways in which you have come together as a community of God's people. Celebrate the ways in which together you will move forward. And whether that means you are following every rule by every jot and tittle, or if sometimes you make a mistake and you got to redo, it's all good because God loves you. So celebrate. They decide together that they want to refocus on living up to or honoring the law of Moses. Remember, I told you last week that the, the book of instruction is really the Torah, right? It's the law. Um, the particular translation we're using um, calls it the book of instruction, but um, but they 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 decide together to honor the law of Moses as they reconfigure their own community of faith. It is important to them to maintain their culture and their religious traditions. God's love for them transformed their hearts so they wanted to do what they believed was right. One of the things I want you to remember, because from my perspective, this is kind of a hard part of it. It's kind of a harsh lesson. At least one verse of it is. The rest of it, I kind of agree with a lot. Um, but one verse I have trouble with. But one of the things that we need to remember in the 21st century is that Israel believed, first of all, that they were God's chosen people. And as such, they needed to continue their own religion and their own culture. And so in thanksgiving for everything that God has done for them and that they believe God and, and that everything God has done with them and through them and everything they believed God would promise to continue to do in the future, they held each other accountable and they wanted to hold each other accountable to what Moses taught their ancestors and the lessons that were left for them. They wanted to follow the law. God's love transformed their hearts. Another thing to remember, however, is that they believed that they were in danger of extinction. After being taken into slavery, after being liberated and then wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and then getting settled again only to mess up and get exiled again, they kind of believed that everything that was bad that was happening to them was because they messed up and they didn't follow what God had taught them. And if you believe that everything bad that is happening to your people is because you broke the rules, wouldn't you want to follow them as well? I think so. So I don't bash them a lot because I understand what they were thinking way back before the first century. You have to remember how long ago this was written. My problem is when people apply that same verse and others like it, to our 21st century reality. 
that's where we have an issue. At least that's where I have an issue. Today, we do not believe that marriage between different races or different cultures or different religions will lead us to a path of destruction. We do not believe that. We do not believe that it will destroy our relationship with God. Today, we do not believe that same gender relationships or same gender marriage will lead us on a path of destruction. And while it's not specifically mentioned in the text today, it sometimes gets applied from other places in the Bible. Today, we do not believe that our problems in our society are rooted in people who transition from the gender they were assigned at birth to their true gender. We do not believe that people who choose to be the gender, that their true gender, their true gender identity, or people who choose no gender at all, not to, not to assign themselves any particular gender. We do not believe that that leads us on a road to destruction. We believe that God's love for everyone has transformed our hearts so that we can truly say that we are an open and affirming congregation, not just around sexual orientation and gender identity, but around racial identity, around um, socioeconomic realities, around all the ways in which God made us a diverse congregation. Who we are, who we are is because God's love transformed our hearts. So you might guess which verse I have an issue with. In thanksgiving for all that God has done and would continue to do, the Israelites give back to God a tenth, a tithe of their resources. And it's spelled out in the scripture how they were going to divide everything out and which percentage or what portion they were going to give back to the church or give back to the temple. It was seen as a celebration. It was an act of thanksgiving. It was a celebratory act. One of the things that impresses me about some congregations is that when we give the offering, it, it, I have seen people dance the offering down. So as people are coming down, they're playing this great upbeat music that invites us to be joyful and celebrate and people dance as they give their gift, their thanksgiving, their tithe, their offering, their praise back to God. Now we're a little low key and that's cool. There's no victory in volume. I get it. There's no sanctity in silence either. So as we come together, however we embody God's presence with us, it is when we give with joy that makes a difference. When I lived in Ohio, every fall we would do a Harvest Home celebration. And remember, I served in a, for 10 years, I served in a farming community. And any of you who have ever been in a farming community may recognize this. People would bring a portion, you know, maybe just two or three things from their crop, from their harvest. They would bring it and lay it on the, on the altar, on the, on the chancel, and we would bless it. We would thank God for a good harvest. We would thank God for healthy animals. We would thank God for the ways in which God had blessed us as a community, had blessed each individual farmer, and had blessed the crops that would go on, the crops and the animals that would go on to feed not just that community, but everyone around.
the people in Thornville, the people in Columbus, the people in Concord, the people in Israel give and gave what they had, money and crops and animals, all to the service of God's house. The priest blessed the offering and blessed the people. And each week, we, you and I, are invited to bring what we have, our time, our talent, our treasure, to celebrate what God continues to do in and through us. Each week, we are invited to celebrate what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will continue to do long after we think we are going to be here. Because God's love for us not only transforms our hearts, but it transforms our entire lives. And what we do here today continues far beyond our reach. Many of you are here because somebody brought you here when you were younger. How many of you, for, for whom, how many of you is that true? Yeah, yeah. And somebody is a mama whose son went through this church and ultimately became the pastor and is now doing amazing ministry elsewhere. Because Ellie and, and, and Joe's love for Russ and this church's love for Russ, Russ grew up to become the man and the pastor that he is. Because of this church's love for Nick, Nick is now going to live his dream in Costa Rica because of what happened here when Nick was a teenager. The ways in which we change people's lives may just seem like a little thing in the moment, but they're huge. Right now, Audrey and Diana are teaching the kids who knows what's going to happen when they grow up and how our love for them will transform their lives and then they will transform other lives. Each week, we have an opportunity to say yes to God through our commitments, our committees, our ministry teams on which we serve. We have an opportunity to say yes to God as we, every time we invite someone to worship, we say yes to God every time we welcome a new visitor. We say yes to God every time we look for baby Jesus. I'm going to, we're doing that. I love that thing. We're doing, I don't know how, but we're going to do it. Every time we say yes to God and yes to God's work among us, we put, when, when we say yes, every time we put money in the offering plate, every time we show up for a work day for house and grounds, every time we show up when nobody sees us, or there's only evidence that somebody is, has been here because some random mess has been cleaned up. We say yes to God when we work on subcommittees that nobody really knows are happening, like the bylaws revision. Who else wants to, who wants to serve on that, right? Well, Lori and Tim and I are working on that. When we show up and we work on a fair and just policy to protect the people and, pol and property here, while also being compassionate to our unhoused neighbors. When we address the realities of homelessness in this community, that's nothing people really want to work on, but Brooke and Bill and Andy and me and 
several other people, Tim and some other folks, are all working to try to make a compassionate policy that also has some teeth in it. God's love for us transforms our hearts and we are better for it. So as you think about what Jacob said about faith and hope and love, as you think about what Nehemiah's people are doing by celebrating what God has done in and through their lives, as you think about your own signs of life, as you think about what it means to be a part of this congregation, I invite you, I invite you to allow God's love to transform not just your head and your heart, but also your hands. I invite you to think about these things as you complete your pledge card this week. I invite you to think about it as you say yes to God as we prepare our tithes and our pledges for 2025. Let God's love transform everything about you. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If you have been worshiping with us, if you have been worshiping with us, whether here in the sanctuary or online, come on down as the band sings and let's stand and sing with them because we know these songs. So let's stand and sing with them. If you are online and you want to join church, just type in hashtag home, and Meg will let us know that. If you're online and you've never been baptized and would like to either recommit, um, either be baptized for the first time or recommit yourselves, just type in hashtag Jesus, and we'll begin that conversation. If you're here in the sanctuary and you've never been baptized or you'd like to recommit, let me know that. Welcome home.
This table, this bread, this cup remind us of the upper room where Jesus shared a meal with his disciples on that fateful night. He took a very familiar setting and he turned it into a holy place. When he, he took the bread and the cup and he made them symbols of his body and his blood. Come, eat and drink and be transformed by Christ's love for you. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples. And after supper, he took the bread and broke it and blessed it. And he offered it to his disciples saying, this is the bread of heaven, the gift of new life. As often as you eat this bread, do so in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, he took the cup and giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, a sign and symbol of God's grace poured out for you and for all people. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Every, uh, everyone in the sanctuary is invited to come forward. Please raise your hand if you'd like the deacons to serve you. Everyone at home, I hope you can use what elements you have in around that are appropriate and handy. If um, And at the end, we will celebrate together. So please hold the elements until then, uh, until everyone is served. This, my friends, is the body of Christ, and this is the cup of blessing. Let us eat and drink together. Receive this benediction. May you love God so much that you love nothing else too much. And may you fear God enough. That means be in awe of God enough. Trust and believe God enough that you never, never have to fear anything else 
in all creation. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I want to trip you up. <laughs> 